been like to feed Northeastern through the decades? And I've been here for 23 years, which is still shocking to me when I say that out loud, but nonetheless, 23 years, and I still love coming to work every day. Um, Chris also told me I have 15 minutes, so I can't dilly dally on the slide, so I might buzz through real quick and happy to answer any questions after the fact. I just wanted to do a little quick about then and now. Uh, the students in the room will, will certainly recognize some of this stuff, but maybe people that aren't as familiar with our dining services may not. Um, this, as you can see, is a little a shot towards the Christian Science Center. You know, things happening out on the right side, now Northeastern, is in um, the space on the left. We have uh, our college professional space down there, and in the, the giant tower, we probably are in half of that space for administrative. Uh, also, at Italy, just moved to the Prudential. Um, the Four Seasons is coming in, a flower bakery. So this, just some of our neighborhood has changed quite a bit in, uh, most recently. This is our campus, um, then and now. This was, I think, uh, 70s on the left, as you can see. Is that 70s, Chris? Yeah, I think so. I can well, see. Here, yeah, 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 lots of concrete. As you can see, lots of parking, which is somehow disappeared. <laughs> Uh, on the right, I believe this is 2008-2009. This does not include International Village, which would be in, in the lower right-hand corner. Um, East Village, which is just behind the YMCA, or uh, the ISCC Interdisciplinary Science and Engineering Complex, which is on Columbus, uh, which just opened in January. So even this is, is, doesn't show the uh, full growth of our campus, but just you can see the, the transformation is right on the slide. Again, our dining hall, this is on the other left, is White Hall, which is now a Qdoba. Um, and on the right is International Village. So International Village opened in 2009. Uh, it has a sushi station inside of it, as well as Tandoor Islands. The students know this, but just for anyone in the room who's not aware. Uh, it's also a lead gold building, a green certified restaurant. It has kosher, halal, Zone 7, which serves food with about seven of the top eight allergens. So this are, these are just some of the things that have changed from the left the right. We've had a, a bit of a transformation in, in the dining program, as well as the university. Um, also, these are our rankings. This is another thing that has significantly impacted our the culture on campus, the student body, the university community, as you can see. And I think even when I first got here, the, the you probably remember the rankings were... Yeah. We have pay attention. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't pay attention. Yeah. But and they, they, as you can see, they've, they've been transformed quite a bit. Um, during the tenure here, I've also seen three different generations of students, which is each has had their own um, fun, interesting things to learn about for us and try to serve them as best we can, whether it's through social media or different food preferences, which have changed dramatically over the years. Yeah, to just talk a little bit about menu evolution. So what, what has really changed? I mean, this, this picture sort of tells a lot that there's a lot more chefs on campus than there were when I first got here. I remember my first two impressions when I came to visit the campus when I was interviewing is the food. I just finished culinary school at that time, and I was a little horrified at the, the dining, and I thought, well, this is going to be a great challenge and all the concrete. But so this is, this is a, a pretty good example of just how things have changed. There's now, there's many more chefs, very professional, there's a lot more technology involved. It's a, we just figured this is a good uh, slide. So, these, these collection of words are words that when I first got here, and even like Louisa said, up to even 15 years ago, most people never mentioned most of these words. Unless you had a, maybe a severe peanut allergy or something like that, you never heard any of these. And now, students talk to us all the time about all these different factors. <laughs> so, when we're considering menus or anything like that, we could be talking about every single one of these topics. Typically, most of them are um, take are involved in the uh, dining halls uh, and, and definitely in conversations that we have with students on a very regular basis. But 15 years ago, even 10 years ago, half the words didn't even weren't even part of our conversations. As Chris mentioned earlier, we uh, we have quite a bit of dining on campus. It's 73 acre campus, 30 dining locations, so we serve about 20,000 people a day, which is still amazing to me, even after 20 years. And you can see, as you can see, our the dining uh, is pretty spread out, so we we pretty we cover campus pretty well. One is that we were trying to think of examples of different menus that have really drastically changed over the years. When when you know at least 15 years ago, every fry was frozen and who knew where it came from. Now we have lovely local fries from a lovely local farmer who are hand cut on campus and they're cooked closely to order, not exactly to order, but they're cooked very frequently. So. 
that's just it. And we also have homemade potato chips every day. So we do have still the foods that student loves, but we try to do so we try to elevate them. Again, the burgers in the past, the frozen sketchy burger from who knows where. And now we serve uh, fresh burgers from Creekstone Farms that are humanely raised, and the, the plant was designed that um, Dr. Temple Brandon helped design the space where the cattle was raised, and so we're definitely more focused on local humane treatment. A lot of things that our students are very concerned about and we're concerned about. This is another funny one. We were talking, I was talking about <coughs> some of my colleagues that have been here for a while, and uh, we said, so what, what kind of coffee do you think we served back in 94? Not one person could remember. Not one. Out of, out of like 20 people, no one had an idea. Now, these are, the, this, these are some of the copies we have on campus. Some local, <laughs> just some. Ten, there are 10 here. Um, as you can see, we have national brands, local brands, international brands, and Flat Black, Black Coffee happens to be owned by three Northeastern alums. And that's served at 716 Cafe. So when we started the list, we, we even had to go through and say, how many copies of coffee do you on campus? And we, we get asked to bring other copies to campus pretty much uh, at least once a week. Um, another evolution was milk. Back in the day, we had just milk <laughs> with one kind. Now we have skim, non-fat, 1%, 2%, soy, chocolate, vanilla, rice, almond, cashew, lactate, and I'm probably forgetting some. So we have those in the dining halls with our retail. So like all those are available on campus somewhere. So uh, the variety is, is uh, definitely definitely lots of great variety on campus. Um, local, again, as Lisa had mentioned, local years ago was not even something that was mentioned, and now it's very much uh, at the forefront of our mind when we, we think about procurement. Um, how do we work with local farmers when, when the produce is available? How can we source local products? Um, last fall, we had the opportunity to partner with a local uh, farmer to have all local apples turned into applesauce, and we put it into the dining halls as well as the retail, and students were tweeting each other to say, the applesauce is in, go now. <laughs> Which we loved. <laughs> this is great. And we also did a similar project with Commonwealth Kitchen um, with tomatoes where we've been making different um, Tomato, homemade tomato soups and things. So we, we look now for really seek out opportunities to partner with um, people to improve local uh, purchases. This is just another, this is the Curry Center. You probably, I, I don't think I was even here on the left side. And this is Curry Center now. It's our food court. Um, and then it, you mentioned this a little bit earlier too. Uh, a lot of people talk to us about eating healthy often. And you know, it's, it's gotten more well aligned now than in the past. People would talk to us, we want healthy food more healthy food and we put out and it would literally sit there and we move it around and we change it in and so uh, it's, it's definitely improved for sure but there's a lot of aspirational eating going on out there. I mean you know, everyone does it at different times but I have to also report that Popeyes is also the number one brand of food court. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, you know, our food and our, our uh, healthy offerings are higher than they've ever been by far, but Popeyes is still the number one at the One thing that has not changed, <laughs> you know what this is, Chris. One thing that's not cheese changed on campus is the macaroni and cheese. We tried an international village open in 2009, and we said, you know, we're, gonna, we're kind of going to make it fancy. We're really going to kick it out. We're going to put all these great different cheeses in there. We have whole, all these tastings. We put it out, and students almost had a bolt. What the heck is this? So needless to say, we have not messed with the macaroni and cheese since, and that has remained for 40 years the same recipe. Um, there was a gentleman here that's worked here for 40 years, and he said that recipe started four years ago, and we're still the same because the students love it, so we, we will not be changing macaroni and cheese in the future. Um, one of the great things that has helped our entire dining program uh, evolve is the Food Advisory Board. This is a group of students that Myself and our executive chef uh, meet with once a month, 7 a.m. in the morning, can you believe that? And they all show up, which is so awesome. They love it. They give us excellent feedback. They tell us what they like, they tell us what they don't like. We talk about, can we do this? And if we can, we tell them why. And if we can't, we explain that further. And so, and we have, it's just such a great shout out to the food advisory board people in, in the audience. Um, but we're very grateful for their feedback, and it really has tremendously impacted the dining program and, and really helps us tweak to what the students would like. And you talked about food, food television. <coughs> you know, what, it, it is such a foodie culture. It's changed on campus. When I first came here, no one ever talked to dining, no student ever talked to dining services about food. <coughs> no, I think it was probably, probably the first time it was mostly about 15 years ago where it started. 
And uh, as you can see, we just did a quick little, because I was, we started asking this question, so when did all these things start? start? We wanted to do a quick little timeline. And Food TV, as you can see, that's about that, that timeline. That was certainly a tipping point, for sure. And then we happened to open our exhibition kitchen, which is a demonstration kitchen, in 2004. We just had, we had our 10th anniversary a couple years ago. But that's, that's incredibly popular on campus for students in the community. And it's highly unusual for a college um, and university that does not have a food program or a culinary program to have a demo kitchen. It's, it's almost absurd and unreal. Because people come and they say, how do you guys have a culinary program? No, hospitality? No, anything? No, we just have a lot of students that love food. So we're, we're very excited to that. And we recently, we, we, just at the end of December, we're invited to, thank you, uh, join the Teaching Kitchen Collaborative, which is a partnership between the Harvard School of Public Health and the Culinary Institute of America. So we're really excited about that. And we have some great things. We're going to work with different colleges on campus and students to try to figure out how we can engage students in the different colleges to do academics. Very excited about that. So this is a picture, for those of you who haven't been, this is our exhibition kitchen, please come visit it. We have a foodie friends list on the dining website. If you'd like to hear about um, chefs that are coming to campus, please uh, join us there. We've hosted 380 events since 2004. Tons of James Beard Award winners. And what's great really, is the kitchen is pretty small, and you can get up close and personal. You can talk to any of the chefs that are very engaging. You can, some of them will invite you back to cook with them. So please, if you're in the area, come visit us there. Again, just another um, another group of with Kristen Kish, Alex Gernicelli, Robert Irvine, Ming Tsai, Dan Cowan, just to name a few. And the best, we had Mario Vitali here in November. He was, it was so big, we had to take it out of the exhibition kitchen into East Village. And after speaking with the president on his Future of Foods, or Future of series, this was called Future, future, yeah, future of Eating, uh, the president said, so Mario, what is the future of eating? And he just stopped and he put his hands up. He said, here, it's in our hands. The future of food is in our hands. So we look forward to seeing how food continues to grow, and I believe it's in our collective hands.